This is an example demonstrating the existential instantiation rule. We call it absolute value. The story is this. Our universe is a set of integers. Every integer has an absolute value and a number that is its successor. Thus, every integer has an absolute value. Let's begin by defining these predicates. A of x means x has an absolute value. S of x means x has a successor. From the story and these predicates, we may represent the premise as for all x, there exists a y, so that a of x and s of y. In English, that is, every integer has an absolute value and a number that is its successor. The conclusion we seek is for all z, a of z. That is, every integer has an absolute value. Once again, symbolically, the premise is for all x, there exists a y such that a of x and s of y. The conclusion is for all z, a of z. So how would we construct a proof of this? If we look at the conclusion, we see that the predicate s is not referenced at all. The conclusion only makes reference to the predicate a. What we need to do is to remove any reference to predicate s from the conjunction that appears in the premise. To do that, we would universally instantiate the x to an arbitrary symbol, and then existentially instantiate y, then simplify by removing the s from the conjunction, in which case we only have a left, and then universally generalize the statement of a. If you would like to complete this proof on your own, please pause the video now. We begin the proof by listing the premise for all x, there exists a y such that ax and s of y. On line 2, we universally instantiate x to an arbitrary symbol c, resulting in there exists a y such that a of c and s of y. Then, on line 3, we would like existentially to instantiate the y to some particular element, but we see that the existential quantification was within the scope of universal quantification. That is, the y must depend upon the c, so we must introduce a skolem function f describing the particular y associated with c. We represent this particular y as f of c. So we have a of c and s of f of c. On line 4, we simplify to just a of c, and then, since c is an arbitrary symbol, we are allowed on line 5 to generalize universally to for all z a of z. This completes the proof.